Um, thanks for interrupting your lunch uh, to uh, come listen to this. So I'm the uh, CTO for the Accelerated Computing Business Unit, and I'm going to talk about our heterogeneous node architecture, um, the underlying technology uh, beneath it, we're calling NVLink, that is enabling us to build a, a very flexible platform permitting um, our system partners and customers to develop architectures that are optimized at the node level and the system level for their applications. So you've seen us announce um, at the convention or before the convention and lots of, lots of discussion about the, the uh, U U.S. Department of Energy Coral Systems uh, collaboratively uh, designed and specified by Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, the Summit and Sierra Systems, huge peak performance. Um, 100 to 300 petaflops performance, shooting for 10 times the performance of their flagship systems today in 2017. This is being delivered as a partnership with IBM and NVIDIA. And uh, these are being seen as uh, pre-exascale systems that are going to provide a consistent template for the application authors to write for that is going to uh, be carried forward to exascale. And underlying that is uh, a technology that um, is creating this platform, this flexible platform that I want to talk about. Some amazing capabilities being defined in the uh, Summit and Sierra systems. Um, the, uh, if we had four of those nodes today, they would be on the top 500 list. The system itself at, at Oak Ridge is going to fit into the same power uh, footprint as Titan, and yet uh, five to ten times the the uh, the uh, performance, and uh, with about one fifth the number of of nodes. So extremely uh, extremely powerful. And if you're into comparing laptops to supercomputers, um, uh, you would need three million of them. So. Kind of going back to basics, when I say heterogeneous computing model, what I'm talking about is optimizing for serial and parallel execution. Again, what we're trying to do here is uh, build a, a, a system that's capable of performing at optimal levels on serial work. Um, and, and for that, we want to have the most powerful CPU that we can. And then also for the parallel work, which often, which almost always in HPC represents the vast majority of uh, the operations that are actually calculated. The serial work might represent the majority of the lines of code, um, but the, the parallel work may, may all be in some relatively small sections of the code, but represents the majority of the operations, usually extremely parallel, and you want to have an optimized platform, an optimized engine for accomplishing that work. And um, that GPU side, that parallel side, is obviously what NVIDIA specializes in. And to, in the, the, uh, uh, the DOE systems that were just announced, the components, the serial and parallel components are the IBM power processor, which uh, is uh, arguably going to be the most powerful serial processor in existence in that, that day and age, and the NVIDIA Volta generation GPU, which is going to be the most powerful parallel processor. And we're going to be connecting these things Obviously, if, if you're creating a, a heterogeneous architecture that has serial and, and parallel components, execution is going to be uh, transitioning between the serial component and the, the parallel component, uh, possibly many times over the course of the execution of the application. And so you want that to be as tightly coupled of a uh, pairing of specialized processors as possible. And that's really what NVLink was uh, originally designed for, was to, to break through the uh, uh, PCIe bandwidth bottlenecks that, that we have today, that as we scale up these uh, CPU and GPU components uh, would become an unacceptable bottleneck. So 
NVLink, think of this as a uh, node integration network for accomplishing a, a logical integration of the CPU and GPU without having to do a physical integration. Um, you know, we've, we've uh, uh, had arguments about uh, integrating CPUs on GPUs, and, and really there's lots of, lots of good reasons why uh, you can retain a huge amount of flexibility, you can uh, make very configurable systems by, by uh, accomplishing a logical integration so that they appear to the programmer and from a performance perspective appear to be physically integrated but still retaining the flexibility to turn up the dial, um, the GPU to CPU ratio one way or the other to create a variety of different configurations um, by still retaining uh, that physical uh, separation. And VLink is a, an NVIDIA designed channel. Uh, it's very low energy, about one third of the energy to move a bit from one point to another as PCIe. And um, uh, in uh, the, the initial implementation of this in our Pascal generation, it runs five times faster and significantly faster in the, the Volta generation. And the goal that we have is essentially to be able to have the GPU be able to stream data to and from the memory that is attached to the CPU at the same rate, the same performance that the CPU can access that memory. And in the Pascal generation, that's about 80 gigabytes per second. Obviously, you know, huge bandwidth attached to the uh, 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 memory that is attached to the the GPU, but we need to be able to access the memory that also that is attached to the CPU and do it at the, the maximum rate that, that that memory can support. Think of these two sides of the equation as being a throughput optimized processor and a latency optimized processor. And, and this is all about defeating Amdahl's law. Uh, unfortunately, Amdahl's law is a law it's, uh, it's not uh, advisory, and even when you distribute your work across hundreds or thousands of, of nodes, at each node, Amdahl's Law is still a, a very powerful fact of life. It basically, if you're unfamiliar with it, it, it basically dictates your maximum speed up depending on um, what fraction of your work is serial and what fraction of your work is parallel. The serial portion uh, can't really be compressed no matter how many processors you throw on it because it's inherently serial. And so that, that can be something that becomes the bottleneck. And this is why we want to have a very powerful CPU as part of our heterogeneous node architecture. The parallel portion, by having efficient parallel processors, we can basically compress that um, at, at, um, at, our, at our leisure when the serial part is always exposed. And this is... Um, um, this uh, uh, NVLink is something that, that is uh, going to be introduced in the Pascal generation. Today, we have PCIe connection among multiple instruction set architectures now. If you looked at, at, um, at the available GPUs and CPU combinations, even just a year ago, uh, it was only x86, but now we're already expanding out the ISAs to uh, permit choices and alternatives to include three instruction set architectures. In 2016, even with PCIe connectivity, we're still going to get a benefit from NVLink and multi-GPU configurations by can communicating between the GPUs over NVLink a much higher bandwidth uh, channel, and there's many applications that uh, see a speed up even from that. And with the power uh, processor starting in Pascal, we'll also see acceleration of the link between the GPU and CPU. And just to give an idea of how much that link matters in multi-GPU configurations, uh, we've done some analysis assuming a next generation processor and um, comparing if that process, if a pair of those processors were connected using PCIe versus, uh, versus um, NVLink, and you can get, you can see that, for instance, for um, the 3D FFT case, you can actually see more than a 2x 
uh, improvement in in performance just from having that that link between the multi GPU uh, configurations uh, be increased in performance, and this is especially important for uh, a number of applications that that are uh, doing um, sorts and doing transposes and, and other things that stress that interconnect. So behind our heterogeneous compute model um, is this, this notion of having the CPU be optimized for the serial tasks and the GPU optimized for parallel tasks. And if you do an Amdahl's law analysis and compare that to uh, a, a philosophy where you have many cores, but they're, they're weaker cores. And so this would be like a Xeon Phi approach, but you also see other, other CPU vendors for multiple ISAs, including ARM talking about having, you know, pretty large numbers of weaker cores on a single die and using that both as the serial processor, so you're gonna be limited to the single core performance, um, and also as your parallel accelerator. In my view, you know, you're kind of getting the worst of both worlds there because many CPU cores uh, is not a very efficient parallel processor. And uh, for instance, in the case of the Xeon Phi, even in KNL, the single core performance that you have there is only about one quarter of the serial performance of a full scale um, Xeon CPU that we would pair with an accelerator in that generation. And you can, you can do a simple Amdahl's law analysis to, to show you what the results are if you're looking at your runtime. Um, for instance, um, if you look at this chart, at the very bottom, I'm just showing uh, you know, an application let, that if you ran it on a single core with no parallelism, it would take 10 minutes to run. Uh, at 98% parallel, if 90% of the parallel uh, of the work that you're doing in that 10 minutes is is parallel. If you distribute that over one GPU plus one CPU, so two sockets, um, you would see that that uh, you'd be able to run it in a little over a minute, maybe a minute and a quarter. And if you had a pair of of uh, multi weak core CPUs, say a pair of of Xeon Phi's of equivalent peak performance as the accelerator in this case, because the serial performance is only about a quarter of the CPU performance in the heterogeneous case, you actually see, you know, at 98%, uh, it's comparable performance. But if your application isn't 98% parallel, then things start getting considerably worse. Even at 98%, or even at 90% parallel, you're already seeing a significant sacrifice and your runtime is, is getting larger and as, you go uh, to less parallel work and less parallel work, you can see that at some point the multi-week core, even though it has many times the peak performance of that single CPU at the bottom, it's actually going to be taking longer to complete the execution purely because of the Amdahl's law effects of having that weaker processor on the serial section. And that's really the, the power then of the heterogeneous architecture and why we believe so strongly in having a full strength CPU, the most powerful CPUs that you can, coupled with the most powerful parallel processors. And why that coupling is so important is to, to also make that very efficient. So, and we talked about uh, K80 uh, a lot at the show. This is our new accelerator we've introduced. This is a multi-GPU processor. It has two GPUs. Um, they're in a fixed configuration, obviously, uh, both of them on a PCIe card with a PCI, PCI switch. And, um, you know, this is, this is uh, I'm trying to illustrate that, that some applications see a tremendous improvement in performance uh, comparing a, a K40 to a K80, you see almost uh, double the performance uh, using a pair of GPUs. And so, um, you know, often it's very advantageous to use multiple GPUs per CPU for applications that are highly tuned for, for uh, 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 parallel uh, performance. And we have many libraries as well that are, are highly tuned for parallel multi-GPU uh, use cases, and you can see that that the great additional bandwidth and a great additional 
peak, per, uh, peak uh, floating point operations per second that K80 op, uh, offers are actually usable on real applications. And that's, that's all really very nice. But what we want to be able to do with our Tesla platform uh, and, and enable with NVLink is the ability to configure nodes in a variety of configurations so that uh, the applications that can most benefit from having uh, a particular ratio of GPUs to CPUs or a particular instruction set architecture in order to take advantage of legacy code or third-party applications um, and, and uh, you know, be able to provide a particular uh, serial performance profile that, that you're after. Um, we want to enable that kind of flexibility, and that's really where, where NVLink comes in. And I'm showing uh, the number of topologies that are possible, even with an x86 CPU, uh, using NVLink to connect multiple GPUs together. And that kind of flexibility um, is very important to us, and, and our goal is to enable an ecosystem of processors of interconnects and allow our system partners and customers to be able to build the uh, on top of this platform to be able to build a variety of of customized node architectures and system architectures that are really uh, uh, going to perform optimally on their application mix and so um, taking this all back then uh, to coral um, how did we apply this in practice to the coral system design um, and this is this is all based on NVLink the coral system 3400 nodes each of these nodes has multiple uh, uh, power 9 processors and each of those has multiple uh, Tesla Volta GPUs and and those are interconnected with NVLink it's it's really the fundamental integration vehicle for pulling together the node and this has enabled us to essentially present on a node one single large coherent address space over uh, 512 gigabytes of memory uh, all directly addressable by all the cpus and gpus um, and ultimately this this 40 teraflop peak performance per node um, and in the process of working with IBM and working with the labs and uh, configuring this node. We took, uh, as part of the RFP, the, the, the laboratories put together a series of over 20 mini apps that reflected the performance characteristics of, of the, the wide variety of applications that were important to the labs. And the different labs have very different applications and application profiles. And so we use those applications uh, as our input and uh, iteratively uh, adjusted the ratios of GPUs to CPUs and how many CPUs and how strong those CPUs had to be and, uh, and what kind of connectivity we needed. Uh, to arrive at ultimately the, the node architecture that's being implemented for these DOE uh, supercomputers. And this is just an example then of the final results that we were able to achieve on uh, a selection of both the, the science benchmarks and throughput benchmarks um, that are, were part of, of that RFP. Um, so really a, an example of using an NVLink enabled uh, heterogeneous node uh, platform to optimize an architecture for a particular problem set. So, um, and that's uh, hopefully uh, an interesting uh, uh, explanation of the the architecture reasoning behind the heterogeneous node and and what you can do with it. And I'd be happy to answer any questions.